Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically Ronald Jones, running back out of USC, in terms of his production analytics. Now, if you are new to the channel, you're new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions are going to be in the description. The only term that you have to know for this video is total offensive mark share production at the running back position, which is simply this. You take the total yardage of a, of a running back, so rushing plus receiving, and you divide it by the team total. Uh, so, for example, if a running back has 1,000 yards of all-purpose, rushing plus receiving, you divide it by the total yardage of that offense that they're in. So let's say, the, the again, 1,000 yards rushing receiving, and the team had 4,000 yards. That running back had 25% total offensive market share production. Uh, but what you do with that number is you take that number and you compare it to every single running back performance since the 1969 NFL draft class, and then... Voila, you have a way of saying where the majority of the all pro running backs typically performed in terms of their production, where the five time pro bowlers typically performed, where the three time pro bowlers perform, um, and then so on and so forth. So it's just a general way of saying, okay, this is where the majority of the all pro players typically performed. Did he perform like them? So, in many ways, it's a trait. It's a trait like anything else when it comes to football and, and, and everything else like that. It's just it's a data trait. Um, so you're essentially judging the potential upside of a player based on what they look like on paper, but also based on how they look like on paper based on a large sample size of information to give you that general idea. Um, when it comes to Ronald Jones, he had a 63.97 uh market share production score uh, based on my data since the 1969 NFL draft class again um, he doesn't really hit the all pro threshold again the majority of all pro running backs since 1969 had at least an 89 or higher score all pro running backs is what it is it's Adrian Peterson it's uh, Le'Veon Bell, uh, it's uh, Ladanian Tomlinson, it's Barry Sanders, it's those types of guys, those rare, super duper rare running backs. Uh, and he doesn't quite hit that area. Um, he doesn't quite hit the five time Pro Bowl area either of 69 or higher. That's guys like Marshawn Lynch, that's guys, uh, you know, just like, like those types of guys, guys that aren't exactly slam dunk multiple all pro types. But definitely guys that are very, very, very good. Uh, so Frank Gore is another one of those guys, you know, that hit the five-time Pro Bowl area, essentially. So, um, you know, running backs that are very, very good, not exactly all pro, but definitely pretty decent. And then, of course, you have the three-time Pro Bowl threshold of 52 or higher, which is more so where Ronald Jones ended up, uh, which is essentially what it is. It's the three-time Pro Bowl area, typically running backs that have relatively short lifespans, but they definitely do pretty decent. You know, they, they, they put in work, uh, so to speak. Uh, they may not have the longest career ever or the most fruitful career ever, uh, but they definitely do some interesting things in their career. And that's essentially where Ronald Jones is, is that he's pretty much above average in terms of his production. He just didn't quite hit the five-time Pro Bowl area or the All-Pro area. And then, of course, when you look at the averages at the position, uh, he does not, he's nowhere near the average All-Pro score. Uh, he's not really near the average Pro Bowl score, nor is he even really near the average starter score. Now, again, he definitely is in the three-time Pro Bowl area, but he's a guy who's kind of on the fringes. Now, the only benefit to Ronald Jones, and I'm not going to get into age data just yet, but just to preview it a little bit, is there is some positives to Ronald Jones when it comes to age and when it comes to strength of schedule. Um, so there is some things here and there to point towards Ronald Jones having a, an above average career because there's some positives in terms of his age and positives in terms of his strength schedule. However, all this production data really says is that he's not exactly a slam dunk to be considered like a top five running back in this draft class. Like it's just not exactly there. So again, and, and, and the thing you have to understand is that I understand a lot of people don't really want to think about the running back position like that, but in my opinion, you do. Like, you want, if you're going to take a running back in the first round, you want them to be that all pro potential guy. You know, like, that's what you want. You want them to be that level, or at least average Pro Bowl level. So, when it comes to Ronald Jones, again, above average production, 
definitely some positives to look at and we'll get into a lot of those positives in, an, in another video in the future but there is sort of a concern of potential upside just because his production is good but it's not great so that's the only sort of major thing when it comes to Ronald Jones uh, and of course uh, my name is James Coburn uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn at wordpress.com you can also follow me on twitter at geometrics hit that notification button as well so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops and also be sure to check out the 2018 NFL free agency guide which of course is available on amazon.com uh, in that guide it has profiles on quarterbacks running backs wide receivers tight ends offensive linemen that are set to hit free agency this year uh, and it'll have guys like Kirk Cousins it'll have guys like Case Keenum Drew Brees uh, I running back wise Le'Veon Bell uh, you know wide receiver Allen Robinson just tons of different guys to kind of look at there um, and I highly recommend that you buy that guide because one it'll educate yourself a lot more about the free agency the free agents that are about to hit the the you know hit free agency two it'll give you a lot of overview and information on analytics and data you know uh, that I think a lot of you guys if you're not familiar with the work that I do uh, I think that guide will give you a lot of information that'll just make you a more educated person overall um, and three it helps support the channel you know so anytime you buy a free agency guide all that funds helps me to keep doing what I'm doing so um, if you want to support the channel other than subscribing other than leaving a like other than do those other sort of things which really help me out uh, or sharing the video of course uh, just be sure to check out the uh, free agency guide I highly recommend it uh, the 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 uh, link to the guide is in the description uh, so just go there to kind of to get that information and uh, again I highly recommend the guide to check it out and do those other short things um, and of course uh, my name is James Coburn uh, you can find my work again at draftcoburn at wordpress.com and I'll talk to you guys in the next video peace